Hey, all right guys, welcome back. We're gonna be taking a look at another kit that kind of goes along with my HGUC Dendrobium build that I'm currently working on. And that is, of course, the HGUC Gerbera Tetra from that same series. You can even see the Dendrobium there in the background. This is another kit that I've just had in my backlog for a long time. And so I figured since we're taking a look at that Dendrobium, we might as well also take a look at the Gerbera Tetra now here. It's actually a really cool design and a kit that I've been looking forward to building for a long time. I just have never gotten around to it. So I figure now is a perfect opportunity. Let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, we'll start off by taking a look around the box. All right, so some really cool box art here for this. As I mentioned, you got the Dendrobium flying there in the background, but the Gerbera Tetra looks really cool. It's such a really cool design. I love the design. And of course, it's got a quite unique color scheme. It's not like red or like kind of sharp pink as you see on like different ZM mobile suits, but it's more of a kind of, I don't know, a very deep pink kind of color light red I guess sort of. You also have a Gelgoog Marine there in the background as well. Another really cool version of the Gelgoog. Going around here onto the side, my box is quite faded. You can get a sense of how old uh, this one is, but it's uh, 159 in the HGUC line. And then if you take a look on the bottom of the box, we have photographs here of the fully painted kit there front and back. A detail shot of the back minus the kind of backpack that it's got on there and then some more text over here all in Japanese. Flipping it around to the other side we have some more detailed images showing off the kind of possibility of everything, some of the articulation, uh, some of the gimmicks kind of built into the kit, the backpack, the weapons, and then as I said there it is with the uh, Gelgu Marine and the Zaku 2 F2, the best version of the Zaku 2. And the list price is here on the box at 1800 yen. With that let's go ahead and pop it open and check out everything in here. So we'll take a look at the runners in just a moment. Let's go ahead and just set those to the side. That one's out of the bag. I think that's because this is actually was a used kit or a pre-owned kit anyway. This is just kind of fun. It has an ad in here for Gundam Breaker on a PS3. And this one is for Gundam Online for Windows. So a couple of fun uh, adverts there for some old games. Well, let's go ahead and check out the manual here. As is in typical HGC fashion, we have that painted build right there for the main cover image. And over here, some general information about the mobile suit there. Going around the back side, the same kind of stuff we saw on the outside of the box, really, just kind of there's your hand options, uh, details about the articulation of some different parts of the kit, the knee, the waist section there. This kit originally came out in 2013, so it's not very old of a kit. It's 10 years old now, but it's in kind of the more modern HGUC releases, I would consider it. You got the color guide down there at the bottom, and then flipping it open to the center pages here, we have some more images of the kit, some more information. But again, this came out before we started getting any English in the manual, so it's still just all in Japanese, but some information there about the mobile suit. A couple of stills from the anime. Over here, some of the other kits in the HGUC lineup from the series, the GPO-1 in its different forms, GPO-2, 3, Dendrobium, the Camphor, which obviously is from a different series, but they're just kind of including that on there. Interesting they put the Camphor on there instead of the Gelgoog Marine, considering that's on the box art of this. Anyway, so the very last step of the construction is there in color, but everything else is gonna be in black and white here on the inside. We have a parts list there, and then just all of the construction here should be pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and check out the runners. After we briefly take a look at this very small sticker sheet, which it's nice to see, it's mostly just cameras, a couple little black bits, which I think is probably for around like in the visor just to make it black behind the mono eye. Other than that, yeah, just a couple of cameras on there. You love to see it. But then for polycaps, we've got PC001 here in gray. And for beam saber effect parts, we've got SB6, which is the smaller type 144 scale beam saber effect parts. And these are in clear yellow there. Runner A then getting into all of those nice red colored parts there for the main color of the mobile suit. And again, it's like a very light red, very dark pink. I don't know exactly my, which way you might classify it, but I guess light red. And that's continued here on runner B as well. Some parts there for the body and then also for the arms and legs over here on this section which we have uh, doubles of on runner B2. Runner C is uh, gonna be some parts there for the backpack and for the rifle in kind of like a warmer gray and then compare that to the gray color here on runners D1 and D2. These are in a little bit more of like a bluish gray type of color for the hand parts, the fuel tanks in there and then a bunch of like the joint and mechanical type parts and we've like I said got runner D2 which is gonna be a copy of this half of the runner right here and that is it. All right guys, so here is the kit all built up. A pretty standard 
10 year old HD kit. Pretty much exactly what you might expect. It's got a couple of seam lines on there. It's got a pretty decent range of articulation. It's got a nice number of parts. The part separation is pretty good. It's not perfect. There's a couple of missing color apps here and there, but overall a nice solid kit. Like I said, basically everything that you would expect from an HD from that era. Not quite as nice as some of the really nice HDs that we're getting out these days, but definitely better than some of the earlier HDs. So it kind of falls in that period where the HDs really started to get pretty good. But of course, we've seen some really nice advancements, uh, even more so in modern years. But this kit, of course, is not that old, but it certainly stands at the test of time so far. Let's go ahead and check it out. Before we get into the accessories, just real quick on a note about the stickers, you'll notice the very few stickers that we had for this kit is just for the black backing behind the eye for and then the one there for the mono eye. This one right here on the front of the chest around here on the back, that little green camera sticker right there on the backpack. And then that red one there for the camera on your beam rifle, which is a perfect transition into our accessories here, starting with the beam rifle. So really awesome design for this. I love the design of this beam rifle. You are gonna have a seam line basically wrapping around the entire thing as it's just like two halves put together. And then a separate piece there for the tip. You have your trigger finger hand, which I've just gone ahead and put right here on the rifle because there's no other use for the trigger finger hand other than just for this weapon. So you might as well just keep that on there. Our only other hand option part here then is going to just be this open hand for the left side, which is not really even that uh, good of an expression here for the open hand. I gotta say just kind of an open resting hand. Otherwise, just on the kit, you just have your two holding hands there. Your two beam sabers and beam saber effect parts are again in that shorter length of the beam saber effect part blade. So you could use the longer length if you had an extra one lying around or something like that, if you wanted a little bit longer one, but these are gonna be in that shorter length, nowhere to store these or anything on the kit when not in use. So you just kind of have to set those off to the side. And then our only other accessory here is going to be the alternate backpack that includes the fuel tanks and the very long part here out the back and that little antenna, be very careful with that. It's not super thin, but you are gonna wanna be a little bit careful as with the antenna here on the head, which on a real quick note about that does have a little safety flag on there, which you can cut off and sand that down if you want that to be more of a sharper point there for the antenna. Now to swap the backpack, you just take off this part right here and then this alternative one just plugs right onto there in place of that. You kind of have to like tuck the fuel tanks down underneath these fins that stick out the back of the shoulders, but once those are, once that is in place, I should say, it looks like this and has always looked a bit like eyes and a super long nose and an open mouth there. It looks a bit weird, but from the front, it looks awesome. It's a really cool design here for this. Love the fuel tanks. Obviously you're gonna have seam lines on those, but in general, it's just such a really cool and unique design feature. And I'm gonna take that off here for just a second so we can talk about the articulation of the kit. Starting off up here at the head, the head will point up to about there, which is not too bad. And then down, you can see the head kind of just barely fits within kind of the space there of the armor of the torso, but that points all the way down to there. Interesting that we didn't get like little black stickers for these vents like in the top of the torso there. I think that would have been nice, but that's pretty easy to fill in there with, just with a little bit of black paint or something. And obviously there'd be a few other places like here, the front of these vents here, the front of, of the uh, shoulders. It is an HD kit, so it's not surprising that it's missing small color apps, but I think with this one, if you just have like a pen line marker and then like a little bit of black paint, or like a dark gray or something like that, you could fill in a lot of these little details quite easily. In the torso section, you are gonna have a little bit of movement for back, side to side, and just a little bit of rotation, but not really a whole lot of movement there in the midsection. The shoulder armor is gonna swing to the front and back like that, but as you can see, you got a seam line right there and right there, so a lot of seams there on the top of the shoulder. You can adjust the angle of the little thruster bell here, and then this whole section you can also tilt up and down like so can bring the shoulder armor up and then bring the arm up vertically to about 90 degrees. That's gonna be about the extent of that and another seam line right there on the forearm as you can see. Otherwise the arm here gonna rotate there at the top, bend at the elbow about 90 degrees, maybe slightly more, but not too much more. And the hands are just there on your standard ball joint. Moving on down, we don't have any skirt armor to speak of, but the hips, the legs can go out to about there, and then without any skirt armor, you're not gonna have any trouble bringing the legs all the way up. The knee joint 
is going to have a double bend there, a double joint there to the knee. And that's gonna give you a pretty full bend there at the knee, no separation of this knee armor that's just connected here to the front of the leg. But that means that you don't have any seam line here on the front. And then going around to the back, the seam line is hidden as just a panel line right there. So the legs are all good, no seams anywhere here. The ankles will move side to side here pretty nicely. Can bring the foot to the front and then all the way back down to there. So not really a whole lot of range of movement there at the ankles, but then up underneath the feet, you have about half detail, half hollow gap. That's not really ideal, but it's okay. And of course, one other thing we need to take a look at here in this review is how this is going to compare with the dendrobium. So obviously it's going to be roughly the same size as the GPO3. If you guys watched the live stream build, I built up both of these kits in a kind of double live stream build. But if I move that around because of the length of the cannon, obviously the more pertinent comparison would be to see how the Gravero Tetra looks at the end of the cannon, something like that. And it's gonna look pretty convincing. I think if you wanted to build that kit up and then build this up and then build it into some kind of display, having the Gerbera Tetra kind of skewered here on the end of that as seen in the anime, it's gonna fit pretty well. But anyway, there you guys go. So just to wrap up the review then, I gotta say, I'm glad that I was finally able to build this kit up. It is a really nice HG kit. It does have, you know, some pros and cons for sure. I think in general, it's of the era, as I said before, of kind of a lot of the nicer HGUC kits that we've seen in more recent years, but it does still have some uh, bits kind of that are unfortunately some of the downside of just kind of HGs in general, like having a few, a few seam lines here and there, missing a few small color apps here and there, which I feel like if this kit were to come out now, probably we, could have, we would have got a few more stickers included. And hopefully I would hope maybe a little bit better color separation in like a couple of those little parts, but it's just like small vent details here and there basically is the most part because this is the kind of mobile suit that's uh, just all red. So pretty easy to make just all in that one color, but there are a few little details here and there that are missing just in terms of like the colors of it. But like I said, a little bit of detail painting, a little bit of panel lining, some top coat on this, and it would basically be pretty much fully color accurate there. But it's a really cool kit. I love the design of this one. I love how unique the design is. Just obviously those big massive thruster bells there on the shoulders. And just kind of the general design of, especially like around in the torso and head section, how it has like this really cool, maybe just because it's also in red, but it has this really like sports car feel to the design, which is really nice. It definitely sets it apart from a lot of other mobile suit designs from that era. So it's really quite a really awesome design. Pretty great kit overall, and I could highly recommend it to you guys, so check it out. If you guys have any thoughts or opinions about the kit though, or questions of course, feel free to share those down in the comment section below. And if you're looking for some more Gunpla, anything from Bandai, paints, tools, supplies, any of that good stuff as well, check the link in the video description to USA Gundam store. We've got all that different stuff you guys can check out there on the site. Oops, okay guys, so right after I finished recording this review, I broke this part, and what this is is just this part of the shoulder, which plugs right onto there. It's this little tab that plugs into a poly cap right there, and I was moving this, and it just broke right off. So I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys how you could fix something like this relatively simply, because unfortunately this is the kind of part that you kind of really can't just take that tab out of there and then just glue it back on and then hope that that's gonna work. That might work temporarily, but it would be very, very weak. So what I'm gonna do, rather than trying to rebuild that as the exact same like square peg that it was before, is just rely on some brass rod. So this is 1.5 millimeter thickness brass rod. And as you can see, it fits into there quite well. Now, obviously just one rod just is gonna make this just kind of, it won't stay in place. It needs to be a square piece so that it's stuck in place. So what I'm gonna do is make two holes, one on this side and one on this side so that we can put two bits of rod in there and then that will be able to hold it and hold it straight. So we just needed to drill. And this is once again, just the Mr. Hobby pin vise set, always useful. Just gonna make our two holes here. I'm just doing it in one millimeter first and then I'll use the 1.5 millimeter drill. I'm just gonna use a bit of super glue to hold our rods in place there. Because I have the rods going all the way through just to make sure that they're nice and strong there, I did have to cut a little bit of this just because they were kind of in the way of the connection of these parts, but just cut a little bit of that out of the way just to make sure that these can still close up as they're meant to and then you could get rid of that seam line there as well. Just plug this part right here onto our rods, plug this all back together, back on the kit, and there we go. Good as new. Now I still need to remove those seam lines to get it really looking its best, but you guys get the idea. So 
that is going to be just one very quick and easy and simple way to just fix a broken part. Just to basically demonstrate to you guys that uh, stuff breaks sometimes and it's relatively easy to fix most things when it comes to just a, a Gumpla part like that. A couple of really handy tools just to have on hand for such occasions and for any kind of like modification or anything like that. Obviously a drill or pin vise set there like that. Some super glue, although most of the time uh, plastic cement would work, but since this time we were working with a brass rod, uh, which is also something helpful to have on hand. One millimeter, 1.5 millimeter is a good diameter to just have some of that on hand for this type of occasion. But had this not been using brass rod, I would have just used Tamiya Thin Cement so long as it's plastic and plastic, but super glue, Tamiya Thin Cement, important things to have on hand. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. If you'd like to like and subscribe while you're here, would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day, guys. Bye.